Hi, my name is Paul from Physics Hi, and today I'm going to be discussing how you can linearize data. Now, what does that mean? That is really establishing the mathematical relationship between your independent and your dependent variable. Now, you may be thinking, hold on, this is all about physics. Yes, but actually this skill you're going to be applying in any way where you're manipulating data. So whether you're doing mathematics, whether you're doing any of the sciences, hopefully this video will be useful for you. Stay tuned. If you watched my previous video, I explained how you can draw the appropriate graphs for the type of data that you have. But generally, when we look at the graphs that we have, we're looking at trends that we see. For example, you might find that as your independent variable increases, so does your dependent variable. You might find, in fact, as your independent variable increases, your dependent variable decreases. Well, there is actually a mathematical relationship that ties the two together. That's true for many, many situations in science. There's a clear a law or a principle at play here that is undergirded by the concept of mathematics. And what we're here interested in is can we establish more of that mathematical link? Now, I'm going to go through some examples and show you how we use linearizing data to establish those mathematical relationships. I'm going to start with something very basic. So here I have x and y. They're my two variables. x is my independent, y is my dependent. And in this case, I'm going to be graphing one against the other. Now, I choose the columns. And in this case, I'm going to insert a chart and I'm going to use an XY chart. And here is my graph. And you see there is a lovely, lovely line. Now, in this case, what we say is there is a linear relationship. That is, if we were to look at one against the other. So let's say I looked at the slope of that line. We know that as x increases, y increases at the same rate. How do we know? Well, basically, if I go the slope, which is the rise over the run, I'm going to get a constant. In other words, if I can work out that constant, that slope, I can then rearrange that and I get that y is equal to m x. And so there's my mathematical relationship. So how do I do that? I'm going to add a trend line to it. And then what I can also do is set the equation. In the case here, I've got a value of 7.96, basically times x. So that according to the graph is very close to eight. And in fact, that makes sense. If you look at the data, 10 times 8 is 79 closely, right? 20 times 8 is 160, and so that's close. So in other words, the relationship we end up having here is, is if we have y is equal to 8x. I know that's not exactly 8, but it doesn't matter. That's because of the slight, basically, uncertainties in the data that's collected. So there is my mathematical relationship. So what are some relationships where you have a lovely linear graph? Well, of course, force is proportional to the acceleration of a system. So there's a linear relationship. We can also talk about, let's say, the photoelectric effect, that the energy of a photon is proportional to the frequency of that particular photon. So now let's have a look at a different set of data. You can see as x increases, my y increases, but the rate's definitely different. How do we show the mathematical relationship? Well, like before, what you do is you graph the two together. And in this case, I don't get a linear fit. I get a curve. So this is the case where we're going to be doing what we refer to as linearizing the data. Now, what we first need to do is make a prediction what we think the data is doing. So what I do first is I create a new column. I think it's a square relationship. So the first thing that I do is I'm going to put in a square relationship option. And then I'm going to say equals that value to the power of two. And then I'm going to graph the fill that down like so. In other words, if I think it's a square relationship, how about I graph not y x versus y. No, no, I'm going to graph x squared versus y. So now I'm going to draw another graph, but notice this time I choose what I think the relationship is. And in this case, when I graph that, I get a lovely linear fit. And so this is the graph I don't want. This is the graph that I want. Now, what does that mean? What that means is this, because this is now linear, I can say y is proportional to x 
squared. Remember, x squared is down the bottom. That means the slope y over x squared is a constant value. It's a slope. And of course, I can work out that slope by again by determining the trend line. So in this case, I will simply add a trend line, add the equation to the line in this case. The value here is 4.97, so it's practically 5. And so what I say is, well, if m is 5, then what I can say is, is, is that y is equal to 5x squared. That's my relationship between those two variables. Does that make sense? Well, 10 squared times 5 is 500, so that's close to that. To that. Let's choose 60. 60 squared is 3,600 times 5, well, that's close to 18,000. And so you can see now that that here is my mathematical relationship. What did I do? I took the x and I linearized it. I made it into a straight line, but in this case, by squaring it. What are the examples that you have, let's say, in physics? Well, the most obvious one that comes to my mind very quickly is the relationship between displacement and time. That is, displacement or distance traveled is proportional to the time squared. So there's a square relationship. And of course, we know that because s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. It's a quadratic, it's a square relationship. Let's try the next one along. In this case, what do you notice? As x increases, my y decreases. So what we have here is, an, I guess, what you can recall as an inverse relationship. But that's not enough because an inverse relationship can be a number of things. It could be a simple inverse relationship where if x doubles, for example, y halves, or it could actually be an inverse square relationship. So let's examine it and establish the graphs and linearize it. Again, we start off by graphing our data. And you can see I definitely have an inverse relationship, but I don't want this. I want a straight line. So is I'm going to insert a column. And in this case, I think the relationship is going to be 1 over x, let's say. And there, again, I use that concept of the formula I put in here. You can do this by hand, though you just got to calculate each value. And now I'm going to graph the relationship, the one on the x will be on the bottom. So therefore, I'm going to insert a chart, in this case an xy scatter, and hey presto, I get a lovely straight line. Now again, let me remind you here of what the labels here are on the axes. This is still y over here, but now on this axis, I have 1 over x. Now what's the mathematical relationship? Well, clearly I'm getting a straight line, so y is proportional to 1 over x. And then if I work out the trend line, I'm going to get a value of 4, which tells me that my relationship is y is equal to 4 over x, our inverse relationship. Now, in physics specifically, what are some of the inverse relationships you may come across? Well, two come to mind. The first one is the relationship that is often referred to as Wien's law, which looks at the relationship of the temperature and the, in, the, ma the wavelength of the maximum intensity of a black body curve. And that basically says that the wavelength is proportional to 1 over t. In other words, the wavelength gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the temperature gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Another example that we might have is de Broglie's relationship, which is about the wave particle duality. And that says that the momentum is basically equal to h over lambda. Well, there you go. You see that p is proportional to the inverse of the wavelength. Just one last example. Let's now have a look at this one. Again, if I graph this over here, I'm going to see I'm going to get something that we can call an inverse relationship. You can see in this case, I clearly have a trend line that looks like so. But let's say I start off by thinking this is just an inverse relationship. So again, I insert, and in this case, I put equals one over the value that I have here. And now I graph those two values out, insert, chart, and xy scatter. Oh, look at that. I'm getting a curve. What does that mean? Well, that means this is not the relationship. It's not an inverse relationship. It's actually an inverse square relationship. Let's say we can confirm that. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to take this here and I'm going to put this up to a power of two. I'm going to actually change the values over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this down. So I'm actually replacing with the square relationship. And when I fix that, 
hey presto, I've got a straight line now. And again, by adding the trend line again to this situation, I'm going to find that my value there is practically four. So what that means is, is that my relationship is y is proportional to one over x squared, and therefore y is equal to four over x squared. And if you did the calculations, that's what you would get. So what's an example of an inverse square relationship? Well, there's lots. The law of gravitation says that F is proportional to the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared. So F, the gravitational force, is proportional to the square, inverse of the square of the distance between them. Coulomb's law is practically the same sort of situation. And then there's the intensity versus distance. That is the intensity of a light source is inversely proportional again to one over the distance squared. So it's an inverse square relationship. So that's linearizing data. Now I've used simple polynomial or power relationships here, but there are other ones as well. So for example, Kepler uh, with his Kepler's law, which said basically that r cubed over t squared is a constant, well, he would have had to cube the radius and square the de period in order to establish the mathematical relationship, so to speak. Uh, if you were to look at half-lives, in that case, your um, linearizing data would require to you, for you to use exponentials and, and log logarithms. Well, I hope that has helped you understand a little bit about the concept of linearizing data. In essence, it's changing your graph so that you end up getting a lovely linear fit. As a result, you can determine the slope. And then by determining the slope, you can establish the mathematical relationship between your independent and your dependent variable, whatever context that you're looking at. I hope that has helped you understand that. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you and consider supporting me via Patreon. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.